So we have a cylindrical capacitor that is filled with a dielectric material. The Pyrex glass is serving as the dielectric material. We're basically looking down on top of the glass and there is an inner radius of the glass marked A and an outer radius of the glass marked B. And then again, the Pyrex material is serving as a dielectric material. A dielectric is basically an insulating material that increases the capacitance of the capacitor. And we know that it does so according to the following relationship. We would have the capacitance equals a dielectric constant known as kappa multiplied by the capacitance if the capacitor was filled with air rather than glass or some other material. Now the expression for the capacitance when the cylindrical capacitor is filled with just air is also a known value. It is derived earlier in this chapter using Gauss's law. And so we're going to fill in that expression for the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor as if it were filled with just air rather than glass. And we know that that comes out to, after applying Gauss's law, to 2 pi multiplied by epsilon naught times the length of the cylindrical capacitor divided by the natural log of the ratio of the outer radius to the inner radius, so B over A. And so this becomes the expression we need to calculate the capacitance of this Pyrex-filled cylindrical capacitor. Now we have put a table of values here that's going to be useful to us. We can see that when the dielectric material is Pyrex glass, then the dielectric constant, kappa, is equal to 4.7. So 4.7 will be the value we plug in here. The length of the capacitor was given in the question. It says the glass is 15 centimeters tall, so that's basically the length of the cylindrical capacitor. And then the values of B and A are given in the question as well. The outer radius is 3.8, so that's your B, and the inner radius is 3.6, so that's your A. We will have to convert the length from centimeters to meters. We don't have to convert the radii because when we divide them, you'll see their units cancel anyways. So we'll go ahead and begin to plug in the known values here. Again, kappa is 4.7 for Pyrex glass multiplied by 2 pi. Epsilon, we may know, is a constant. It's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs squared per newton meters squared. And then we'll multiply that by the length, which again has to be converted into meters. So that's going to be 15 times 10 to the minus 2 meters divided by the natural log of B over A, so 3.8 over 3.6. You don't need to put in the centimeters because they'll cancel anyways. 3.8 over 3.6. So you pick up your calculator, you would punch this in, and when you do so, you would get approximately 7.25 times 10 to the negative 10, and the standard unit of capacitance is farads. If your homework system requires you to convert that into nanofarads, then you recall that one nanofarad is 10 to the minus 9 farads. So basically, you would take this answer and divide it by 10 to the negative 9. And when you do that, you would get about 0.73 nanofarads. So you could express your answer in nanofarads, or you could express it in farads. So those are the answers to part A. We can now move on to part B of the question, and part B wants us to determine the breakdown potential of the capacitor. Now that's going to depend on the thickness of the dielectric material that's situated between the two aluminum surfaces. So basically speaking, the breakdown potential, which we can abbreviate BP, is going to equal a quantity known as the dielectric strength. And that value depends on the material, which in this case is Pyrex, multiplied basically by the thickness of that dielectric material. So in our case, it's the thickness of the Pyrex glass. Now, the dielectric strength for Pyrex was given in this table. We can see that dielectric strength measured in kilovolts per millimeter for Pyrex has a value of 14. And the unit, if you look back at the table, was 14 kilovolts per millimeter. And then we're going to multiply this by the thickness. Now, the thickness of the glass can be easily determined because we go back 
and we can see that this thickness right here would simply be the outer radius B minus the inner radius A. So our outer radius was 3.8 centimeters minus 3.6 centimeters. So right now we would have the 14 kilovolts per millimeter multiplied by 0.2 centimeters, but the units are inconsistent here. We have millimeters and centimeters, so we're going to have to convert the centimeters into millimeters, and we may all know that one centimeter is 10 millimeters. So we multiply by this extra conversion factor so that the centimeters cancel and then the millimeters cancel, and then when you punch this into your calculator, you're going to get a final answer of 28, and the unit here will be kilovolts. So this would be the correct answer to part B.